in touch. Thanks, Tim, Career Podcast. I am Dr. Ayo Odofare, the host of In Touch Think, STEM Career Podcast. That point. Uh, what are some, some of the most exciting development uh, in computer science right now? And how do you see the field evolving in the future? Cloud, cloud, cloud. Why cloud? cloud? Why, why, why cloud? It's, it's changing how we save information. It's changing how we we will be moving forward with technology. For example, my my um my studio for recording. Like I was telling you about it, doctor, the other day. Yes, so I have a cloud studio for YouTube podcasting and everything. Right. Wow. Um. When I'm when I invite you to the podcast, you're recording. I'm recording. This is what's happening. The camera is recording locally on your end. It's recording locally on my end. It has nothing to do with the internet. The only reason why the internet is actually important is to get the calls to connect. Once the calls are connected, once we are talking, it's using your camera to record you locally, hence preventing any um, breaks in the video, audio problems and all of that. What it's doing is it's using the internet according to the speed that you have. Wow. To rather record it and upload it. Hmm. Genius. Genius. <laughs> and that's the work of cloud. <laughs> that's the work of cloud. Like, I never thought of it that there will be a day that I wouldn't have to worry about recording with Dr. Ayo, for example. And then his his line is kind of breaking. I see his picture kind of grand. I'm like, oh, this is not going to be nice. Yeah, yeah. Cloud is telling you, hey, don't worry about it. I'm recording it perfectly as quality as his camera is. And I'm just going to take time to upload it, but I will upload it if I can, as fast as I can. And once you get it, it's going to be a perfect video and a perfect picture. That's the work of cloud. Looking forward, now I don't have to carry a lot of bulky um, external hard drive around because all my important information is in the cloud. And trust me, there's this cloud vault that AW has. It has a 64-bit. You, It's not that easy to crack that. As, as opposed to you having a physical hard drive, you get on the train, you get on the bus, you're going home from work, you left it on the seat, someone takes it, plugs a USB in, voila, they got access to it. Cloud will not do you like that. Once it's in there, you have to lock, the, um, um, it's called the vault. Once you have it in there, you, you're you going to be have to be the person to unlock it. Wow, especially with sixty-four bits. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. So maybe I may you have to teach me. So because right now <laughs> I'm still in the old ways. <laughs> so, so you need to teach me because I need to move in your direction. Definitely, definitely. I need to go into you know uh, cloud podcasting. I, I think that's what you call it, correct? Yes. Cloud podcasting. Yes. Uh, you know, I I, I can't help but ask you this question um you know ai is such a a big deal now and and uh, that is is just incredible uh what's your thought about ai this new innovation this new uh whew, <laughs> it's taking the whole world by storm right i know i know <laughs> um so as well, maybe in about five years, if you ask me, I may have a different response. Okay. But for now, um, AI, I'm using AI right now. I'm using Alexa. Nice. And in my uh, house. Everybody's everybody's using Alexa. So right. everybody's using Alexa. Right. So okay. in my so you already know right. for fact that in my house, for example, if I leave this studio right now and then I forget to turn off the light and I'm too tired, I'm just sleepy. I could tell Alexa, hey, Alexa, turn the basement light down. I mean, all off or turn it to 10%. Boom, AI does that, right? Now, on the other side of things, weighing the bad side of it is where someone can actually um, talk like, just like I'm talking right now, sound just like me, call you up on the phone because of an AI. AI records my voice exactly how I talk, how I pronounce all my pronunciation works for me and then act on my behalf and maybe withdraw the money in my bank, my account, you know, but, um, I'm a, I'm a positive person. 
Okay. I would like to always look on the positive side of things. And weighing in into AI and the type of things they are doing now in terms of health. Now AI is a supporting doctors to have like um a successful complex surgical uh, procedures. And it's all because the computer computer can actually calculate in a in a split second what we can't maybe in a year. Mm -hmm. So once it does that, it tells you cut this part, you actually knowing you're doing. So let's look at that on the broader side. It's good. It's helping the world. It's helping things move, especially the world that we're in now. I'm going to keep talking about this. I know people may not understand, but I'm going to keep talking about this. The world that we're in now in 2023, my generation, the generation that's coming after me, we want everything fast. Yeah. We sure. want fast internet. <laughs> <laughs> we want fast cars. We want fast everything. So AI is here to make that happen if we want to look at it in that angle. But like I said, for everything, even the internet itself, right, it has been disadvantages. So we can't say that because of that. It's actually terrible, terrible. It's the devil. We shouldn't tag it like that and actually look look at the good things that it's doing. So that's yeah. my opinion about uh, artificial intelligence. So I can say that your generation is going to drive the use of AI as much as uh, Elon Musk and others are asking for a pause, uh, I don't think there's going to be a pause because your generation is already used to it. They love the convenience. Yeah. Right? So I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Wow. Wow. So what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge facing computer science industry in the near future? Security. 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 Wow. And that's why there's so many, um, well, I think after 2022, there were over 600,000 security jobs open in America wow. alone. So would you advise uh, the young people in our, in our community? Cyber security, guys. Cyber. Do cloud. Okay. Do cloud. Know about cloud. Know about cloud security. It's different from cyber security. Wow. So the future is looking at cloud now. Okay. We have to have someone to protect it. Wow. So cloud security, I do have one certification in cloud um, 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 security. I have a, 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 a degree, a certification I have is with Microsoft Azure, Azure, Secu Azure Network Security. Okay. And it was a tough one because it was fairly new. The things that they were mentioning and talking about, I'm talking about like, for example, the vault that I was talking about, I actually got to know it from taking that certification. So get yourself updated with the latest technology because it's, there's always going to be one when you wake up the next day that you never heard of and it's going to keep coming for the next 20, 30 years from now. So mm -hmm. keep yourself, if you want to stay in this field, um, with everything, what, fall in love with any other field that you want. For example, me, nothing is going to stop me from moving from doing network engineering, right? But I have to know a little bit of security just in case I'm the network engineer on, on schedule or on duty and some security infringement happens and I don't know anything about it. Hmm. And in as much as I'm a network engineer, if I don't know anything about security, I can get a computers to go online and I don't know a little bit of how to protect it to stay online and be safe. Hmm. That's kind of like a little bit of um, a four, uh, shortcomings over there. So kind of get used to be a 360 kind of person, but okay. exactly focus on what you want to do. If you want to be a cloud network engineer, focus on that. But no, just know a little bit about security. That's all I'm saying. So I, I can hear also hear you saying to diversify a little bit. Is that yeah. part of what you're right. Yeah. For example, for me, um, most of the things that I use, most I, I call them my tools, right? Most okay. of the tools that I have, for example, if I go into a job interview, it's because I have different type of petty petty skill sets that doesn't relate to my 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 position mm -hmm. i can i can run fiber cable i can splice it or fuse it with a fusing machine you will not get so many network engineers today that know how to, how to do that wow um so i started doing that way back before i even fully became a network engineer so it become a skill that i could add on to my accolades and say hey well, one one day there may be some there may be something happening in your data center. If you hire me, for example, 
and your cat six cable is cut <laughs> you're gonna are you gonna say you're gonna schedule an appointment for um for example a, a, a cable company to come out find a schedule uh, somebody to the technician to come out and then by the time by the, by the time the person comes out how many hours have gone how many money has the company lost whereas i'm a network engineer i'm here if you give me the basic tools i can patch the cable even if i can't fix it completely or rerun it because i probably may need help i could patch it and bring it back online and at least get us going for the time being mm -hmm. you know it's a skill it's a skill that yeah. not everybody has so yeah be that person be i like that I, I actually like that because that's what i call value added proposition it really makes the the employer to consider twice about laying employees or because you have diverse skills that can be really useful for the company definitely the, co the employer would not want to let you go it's a great idea i, I like that great advice so how do you keep up <laughs> with the latest trend <laughs> and technology in computers? So um, <laughs> just like any other young person, we are really active on online and on social media, for example. Um, what I do personally is I stay updated with the latest technology by following up on the, on the website. For example, on my social media on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, I'm following Microsoft. Wow. I'm following, aside from following the latest rap star or the latest hip hop artist, whoever it is, right? I follow Microsoft. I follow um, Amazon. I follow people in the industry that actually will be the per people to announce these type of changes, right? And then um, once they post it or when they kind of publish it, I'll probably be one of the persons to see it. I also follow like online um, article writers, people that write about the latest technology that are really intrigued by it. So when they publish it, I'll get to read it as well. And then sometimes I actually go looking for it. If there is a technology to do something that I wanted to do, for example, when I wanted something to um, set up my, um, um, my, my studio in a sense to get something to turn everything off if I'm not here, I went searching and I found I found pretty cool technologies that I could do do that for. And then it was like it was so amazing. It was like 15 bucks. Wow. And I, was, and I was like, oh wow. <laughs> you know, so I look for it. If you don't search for it, sometimes you don't know, but it, because it's already there, right. probably because I found out this technology that I was like kind of wild about. It's been out for like five years. Wow. wow. Yeah. It's been out for like five years already. Uh, you have to hook me up. You have to hook me up. Yeah, it works. It works with Alexa too. <laughs> oh, really? You wow. can connect it to Alexa, so it will tell Alexa, "Hey, Gideon sent me to turn on at this time of the day," wow. and then Alexa will kind of like trigger it. Hmm. So Alexa will kind of like be my voice and tell the machine. All wow. the machine has is it's got a scheduler. So it's, those things are really kind of like really. It's really cool, but it's not that expensive at all. So. That's how I, I do to keep myself updated. Nice, nice. Uh, so I, I, I see the passion in your voice and, you know, and so how do we, how do we get to encourage an increase uh, more women, more young men of color, right, uh, in, in this field? What do we do? Where have we gone wrong? Any advice? You're a young person. So um, any advice on what we should be doing, uh, what we could do to, you know, inspire and to get more representation in young women and young Black men and Latinos, uh, Hispanic, you know, people of color in this field? Um, I, I have a few responses to that. For example, um, the, the very few Black people or the very few minorities that have had the chance, like myself, to be where we are, um, what I tend to see, even for me, coming up, one of my episodes on my channel 
I as I actually talked about this and expressed myself on it. We don't look back to help anybody. Hmm. Unlike the other races, they do help themselves. They do promote themselves. I have been at a job where essentially if we're to check, I had the most qualified or say I had the most experience with another person of a different race. Hmm. In two years, they became my supervisor. And I was still where I started, but I was good. I was the one that I could say was pulling all the strings when something happens. If Gideon is not here, we're what are we going to do? Hmm. The person that I started with, I'm not going to say they didn't know anything. They did have some skills, but I had more qualifications, more certifications to show for, and a lifetime experience, right? But this is me here. I got bumped up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And it's like each time, like sometimes it was just a bump in kind of like finance. They'll give you a little bit more money, but it's not so much. But then the person is actually going up. They come from entry level. They go to mid senior. They go to senior level. Before you know it, in 10 years, you're now the supervisor. Then that's because they promoted them to be your manager. Hmm. So what I'm saying is, it's hard. So what I think I was happening is because people like that look like me, we struggle so hard to get where we get to. We have to try extra, extra hard to get there. When we get there, we don't feel like we have to be able to turn back and actually hold someone that looks like us hand and pull them up too. Because we ourselves were already struggling to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, so once, so once we get there, it's, it's almost like we tend to forget or yeah. tend to be like, you know how much I've struggled to be here. You know, mm -hmm. if you're coming in and you just want to play around it, you know, I've been, a, I've been at a job interview with black, a black person on the interview, on a panel, mm -hmm. that black person was the one that gave me the most headache oh, wow. in the interview. Yes. And I've been at a job to be specific to a, at a job interview. I was born in Ghana. I'm a Ghanaian by birth. There was a Ghanaian on, on board. So I was kind of like, oh, somebody that I can relate to. Guess what? They're the reason why I didn't get the job. Wow. They knew I was good. <laughs> and But they're the reason why I didn't get the job because I just wasn't so good enough. It didn't matter. It didn't matter what I could prove or what I had or what experience I had. So that's kind of some of the things that I'm seeing here. Be being here in the, in this industry for, for some time now, at least over 10 years now, I've experienced it. I've met Black people that were like the top dog where I worked. And then I've gone to them because I thought we could relate more. And they will give you some response that will kind of like break you down. Hmm. If you're not strong, it will break you down. I've had that incident before where I wanted to be like this person because they were like doing a lot and they were black. They were African too. Right. And then wow. I was like, I want to be like you, man. I don't know what you did, but I assume it's really hard. And so he went ahead and asked me one question and computer related. It's kind of like a basic thing, but at that time, that minute, I did not remember. I knew about it. I just couldn't remember because of the way he put the question. I was kind of like, pushed to the wall, right? And I didn't remember. And then he proceeded to tell me that, what, where did you work again? And I was like, oh, my previous job, I used to work at a store. He's like, oh, maybe you should go back and try to get that job back. You, you oh, won't you'll never become oh. a network engineer. Oh, that is horrible. Right. And this is someone that looks like me. So what do you think that um, when you get that from someone that looks like you or a minority like yourself that is actually finally being able to get somewhere with all the things that goes against people like us, when you're able to get there and you tell someone that's coming up, a younger person that's aspiring to get there or be like you one day or do more, and you give them this kind of energy, where are we going from here? If I was a so much negative person, I would take this hold on to it. I see another Black person, Spanish, any minority coming and they talk to me. 
I tell them the same thing. And then on and on and on, the yeah. cycle continues. So that's one of the biggest things that I could tell you. And also, um, I want to say this. We should, when we're younger, we don't really care so much about the type of history we make because mm. we think that by the time we get older, we can change. Um, some of the things is that, that I, I could tell you that's um, stopping some of the most of the minority is the background checks. Mm. I've had a job that I didn't get. Everything was good. I passed the interview, but the background failed me because the job didn't want anybody that looks like me that had had more than three tickets. That's almost impossible for being a black person in America. I remember <laughs> growing up, I would drive by the streets and I had one cop pulls me over five times in one week wow. and eventually gave me a ticket. So I cannot, those are some of the things that I just don't want to say I'm blaming anybody. Those are things that we just can't prevent. It's just being a minority. That's just what happens to us. But we just got to be careful. When I got older a little bit, after that job slipped through my fingers, I started pursuing and looking at other avenues to expunge the record. I was able to be successful. The DMV gave me two years of no problem, no getting a ticket, and then they agreed to scratch it off. And that worked out for me. But I know it doesn't work out like that for everybody. I had to downgrade my car. I was driving a Dodge Charger. Apparently, the cops, they didn't like that type of car. I didn't know. I was just buying a car. I was just buying a fast car that I was excited with. You know, I had to downgrade and come back to buy something like a hoopty older car, stayed wow. out of trouble. So we would have to do all of that. It's a lot of hard work. Like I said, um, you would have to work extra hard yeah. being a minority to get anywhere, to even land the first job. But... It's unfortunately, that's all we can really do. Like, try your best, work hard. And then my last thing is, it's an advice. Learn from someone. Learn from someone that's doing it. Don't give up. Um, most of the time, most people give up. For example, the adversity that I had to go through. I apparently, when I talked about it, there were so many other people that said, oh, yeah, I was told that. And I just stopped. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. That's a mistake. Those people, the negative that you get, negativity you get from people are not because of you. I just found out that not too long ago. It's not because of you. It's, it's because of the other person. Hmm. They're, they're the negative energy. You're not. So push harder. We should make the priority of making it a point to push harder and go further than we think and break barriers. Like there's nothing that's normal under the sun anymore. There's something that everybody can actually do. Um, for example, if if you've seen um, a black person become a president, you should know that you can definitely become a network engineer if you want. That's true. So you just got to get to work, do what you have to do. And, and by the way, if you see a black woman become the vice president, vice president of the is after, <laughs> you, you should know that we can do it. I mean, it's hard. They make it hard for us. Yes. Even with my position where I'm at, I'm still seeing that. But I'm always pushing through, holding my head high and pushing it through. So that's just a few things I think I would have to say mm -hmm. if you ask me. But it's all related, you know. It's just yeah. um just don't give up. Thank you so much. So who inspires you uh to want to pursue a career or pursue a degree in STEM? I mean, in STEAM and uh, and a career in STEM. And the, the naysayers. Had, <laughs> I just said that. There, there have been people that told me I couldn't become a network engineer. So wow. I wrote it. I was listening to um this um um this motivational speaker, Leslie Brown. Okay. And I've listened to Leslie Brown and um he where he came from, became a governor or executive board in Ohio, I think. And then he was talking and on and on and on and on and on. So I was like, okay, well, if Leslie did all of that, I could do it too. And that's all he kept saying. And for, for six months straight, I kept listening to Leslie, Leslie Brown. And I just one one day after all the things that I, I had gone through and all the adversity, 
I wrote it in my wallet on a yellow sheet of paper. I turned that part. I will become a network engineer and I put it in my wallet. I recently transferred that paper to the cloud. Wow. But I had it in my wallet for years until I had that email, congratulations for the job offer for the position of network engineering with the, whatever the company was. I took that paper, looked at it. I was like, yes. Congrats. We, we did it. We wow. did it. So yeah, my, my uh, naysayers right. have a big reason to prove people that say you can't do wrong by getting to work and not giving it up until you actually achieve your goal. So wow. that's what keeps me going. Excellent. I also love your self-affirmation. Uh, you know, you told yourself, you wrote it down, uh, that you want to be a network engineer. And, and you became what you wanted to be. Yeah, simple statement. I wrote it down. Self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> sure. I just wrote it. I, I listened to my... Um, my my uh my my guts i want to say and then i listened to what the man said leslie brown i think um he said that in a in a, in in such a positive strong way and he's like trust me it means a lot different if you write it down yes and then jim ron jim ron he's actually uh he passed jim ron said it in a different way but the same exact meaning and then says, write your goals and aspirations, dreams down, and just hang it somewhere every time, every now and then, if you could look at it every morning. And even with mine, I wasn't looking at it every morning. I was looking at it every time I look into my wallet, there's really nothing in the wallet. And then mm -hmm. I sometimes take out the cards to clean the wallet. And right. then it comes out. I see it. I read it. And then I put it back mm -hmm. until the dream was actually achieved. And then now I have a whole lot a different type of list is actually written down somewhere else, but it's more than just a statement. So well that, done. That's, well, yeah, that's part of it. Well, well done. One last question that um, I cannot do right by you if I don't ask you this question. I know that you're a, a, a father, a new father, right? Uh, you yes. have a, 14 months. Congratulations. Thank you. So do you, do you do you get us any sleep at all? Can you share your experience? Well, <laughs> once <laughs> once you become you become a dad, for me, um, everything my my um the risk level. I used to take a lot of risk. Um, for example, I didn't really care so much what happened to me tomorrow. Um, if I go out. God forbid if I get into an accident, if I don't come, oh, well, it's part of life. That's how I used to think. But mm -hmm. after the birth of my son, it changed my life. I wanted to now live much more healthier, yes. much more stronger, and just doing stuff that would not take me into a, some kind of trouble, you know, because mm -hmm. um, it changed my, my perspective of who I should be next. It didn't really change my entire goal. I've always had those goals. Like I said, I've written it down. I've actually even added more, except that it's now not just about myself only. It's about when I'm not here or when I'm much older, what do I aspire to see or what do I want to turn back to mm -hmm. look at and see and be, um, uh, uh, say, satisfied with. So that's kind of one, one of the biggest things for me. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm even more, um, um, inspired more to do more, do more. And that's, that's, that's what brought me to my next phase right now, seeing how cloud engineering works. Cloud engineering is a virtual version of network engineering, if I should say, especially with cloud network engineering is basically physical networking stuff switch server routers not as a virtual version of it in the cloud so now i'm looking towards that angle moving to the next space excellent and and excellent. that brought about five i probably would have just stayed network engineer and be satisfied mm -hmm. but now i'm looking more and more to see 
Yeah. If I could do more, yeah. Excellent. I want my son to grow up and be proud of me. Excellent, excellent. He'll be, uh, definitely, I know he'll fight, your son is going to be proud of you, and I know you'll be a fine and wonderful father. Thank Congratulations, you. my greetings to your son and to your wife. Uh, so you. hopefully someday we'll all get together and have a dinner or lunch together. All right. I very much <laughs> love that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> just want to want to thank you very much, uh, Gideon Obang, uh, for gracing me, for take, giving me the opportunity uh, to talk with you. I would like you to check out uh, Gideon's Obang uh, podcast. And it is Africa Chat, Africa Chat. If you like this type of program that I am bringing, please subscribe to my podcast, In Touch Think Steam Career Podcast. And I will like it if you also donate because I bring a program like this to you. It's, uh, I'm paying it out of my own pocket. Uh, but the whole idea is um, I do believe that Steam is vital to our community because our community's health economy future depends on our solid foundation um, participation in the innovation taking place in the STEM field. As, as the STEM field continues to evolve, this podcast will attempt to connect with men and women who are champions of an in STEM education and career to gain insight into how our BIPOC community can be part of the STEM innovation. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Good night, everyone.